So welcome all to the SIP Virtual uh, Computational Biology Seminar Series. Uh, today we have the pleasure to have Georgie Krobich from the Laboratory of Artificial and Natural Evolution uh, of the University of Geneva. Georgie studied computer, computer science, so he's a computer scientist during his bachelor at the Faculty of Electrical Engineering and Computing at the University of Zagreb in Croatia. He earned his master in computer science and evolutionary computation in 2011 from the same university. And he joined uh, Michel Milinkovic's group in April 2012 uh, as a PhD student for developing meta heuristics for phylogeny inference in the framework of the meta PIGA software. So um, about the group, uh, it's been uh, 10 years that the group uh, core activities revolve around the production of experimental data and the development of tool softwares and algorithms in evolutionary genetics. Since uh, 2008, um, they additionally combine evolutionary uh, developmental biology, or EVO-DEVO, and the study of physical processes to understand the mechanism generating complexity and diversity in the living world. So the group is specialized in non-classical model species in reptiles and mammal mammals, and they integrate data and analysis from comparative genomics, molecular developmental genetics, as well as computer modeling and numerical simulations. So uh, today, Georgie will uh, show how to explore phylogenetic space with MetaPyga, the sort of software. And um, so, Georgie, thanks again for accepting our invitation, and the floor is yours. Thank you, Diana. <clears throat> thank you, thanks to SIB for inviting me to speak here, and thank all of you that are sharing this room to, with me today, and you're having your attention. Um, this is a quick overview of what am I going to talk about. It's, uh, I will shortly introduce the problem of phylogeny for anybody who is uninformed about it. Also, the ways we <coughs> reconstruct phylogenies and uh, at the end, about uh, specifically about my project. <coughs> so, what is, a, what is a phylogeny problem? Imagine we have entities and certain characters that are homologous, so we assume that these characters have a, have a common ancestor, <clears throat> and we want to put them in a structure, tree-like structure, where we will uh, try to infer which groups of entities are more closely, to relate, more closely related than other groups. In this case, we have four animals, and uh, this is uh, uh, the characters we are, we are trying to, we are using to reconstruct their evolutionary uh, past our um, uh, DNA sequences, and uh, on the right side you have a typical, very simple example of, of a tree that tries to explain this data. In, in this case we see that we grouped, for example, rat and pig together and cat and bat together. This is just an arbitrary uh, example. <clears throat> so how do we evaluate this model that explains this, this, this uh, observed uh, characters we have on the left. Well, the simplest example, the simplest method for doing so is using parsimony method, which is very straight, straightforward and very simple to interpret. We just um, try to um, show the minimum, calculate the minimum amount of changes we need on such tree to explain the data. In the upper example, you see that uh, if we put the tree like uh, like so, and uh, let's say that, that that bat and rat have some some character y, and cat and pig have some character x. So in order to explain the this uh, characters in green, which is observed data, we need at least two mutations, either on these branches that I showed here or alternatively on these upper branches with Y. In that case, these internal characters, uh, ancestral and internal character characters would be X. And in no, case, in no way we can put this tree to have less um, mutations. <clears throat> on the lower example, we see that if we rearrange the tree, we can explain the observed data with less uh, mutations. This is the needed one mutation here, meaning that this ancestral on the left internal 
node would be y and this one would be x. And we would consider that the lower tree would be more parsimonious, therefore more better. Um, this method is, is usually still used uh, if you have a character such as, a morph morphological character such as, a, a, I don't know, wing um, shape or number of teeth or uh, this kind of data when you have no other information about how characters actually evolve or change or uh, in, in, in the tree. <clears throat> this, on the other hand, this method is too simplistic and uh, for genomic data. So if we have, if we have uh, let's say, genes to compare and uh, if we assume that, um, again, they all have common, common ancestors, we can introduce a more complex method of evaluating our trees. Uh, such that it involves uh, time and uh, more probabilistic uh, approach and more, more exact approach in, in inferring a tree, um, such, such tree. Um, in order for this method to work, we need to have a substitution model which models the way or the, or the rate in which each, each state uh, transforms in another state. Uh, in this case, we have nucleotides, but you can have something more complex like, like proteins, like codons, like whatever. This is, but for in, in, in biology, in phylogeny, in reconstruction, mostly these three, these three uh, uh, data, data, um, data models are used. Um, they have all different complexities. Uh, they are all time reversible, so in order for our methods to work, they all have to uh, have the same rate in both directions. And also, uh, we need to introduce a concept of branch length, which is a combined uh, measure of rate of mutation on that branch and time. So if we, if we can imagine that if um, is a fast, this is a fast evolving uh, branch, one of them, uh, the, the branch would be longer, or if time was, time was uh, longer in, 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 that, in that period. Um, so that means that there will be more mutation. We expect, the longer the branches, we expect more, more, more substitutions to, to occur. Um, also, we are able to model with this if we have uh, different parts that evolve with different speed, or mutate with different speed. And the, the, this model allow, allows us to, to incorporate this, this, uh, this into, our model, uh, into our model. Um, simplest model of evolution would be Jukes Cantor, where all of, these, uh, all of these parameters here are equal. And the most complex model is uh, general time reversible, where all of these uh, parameters are actually parameters of the model. These are free parameters, that, so you will have to optimize on them too. So prior knowledge often is not known about the rate of substitution. Um, so when we calculate, we, what we actually do is take a column. So in one column, we assume that uh, all of these characters in one column have a common ancestor. So we compare them in one column. And then the entire matrix, we have to take the sorry, joint probability distribution of entire. So we just uh, we superimpose each column on the tree and we calculate the likelihood of the of the of this tree and uh, we just multiply over all columns. Um, at the end, we have this, uh, it's, it's a value of uh, likelihood. This means that with all of the parameters, three parameters, like branch length, substitution, uh, rates, and the topology of the, of the tree, uh, what, is, what is the probability that this model will generate this observed data? Um, 
And now, when we have this as a model, this we define a space, and this is each topology configuration. So if we switch uh, leaves on these trees, and each parameter when we change, this defines a space. And the likelihood defines kind of like a surface over this space. So what our goal, if we want to find the best model to explain the observed data, we need to find tr the tree topology and configuration of parameters on this tree that will maximize this, this surface. So fi we find the, 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 the model that is best in explaining the data. And um, I have to mention that in, in this case, um, the amount of trees that if, uh, as you add more trees, uh, as you add more uh, species or, or entities on the vertical of this matrix, the amount of trees um, that, you, that you can possibly uh, generate, that could possibly be generated with this, with this, with this set of species, um, uh, grows expo exponentially. Even more than exponential, but so you can imagine that if you have like 100 or 200 uh, species, if you would want to check every each each uh, configuration of of branches, this will this is infeasible. Probably you cannot check every every one of them and see which one has the highest likelihood, and then pick this as, as the model. Um, <clears throat> just to show, for example, how we move in this space. For example, we change topology, as, as I explained, and we, in this example, I cut this tree here. So we have two sub-trees, and I rebranch re it here. Actually, yeah, here. And this is one move in this space of topologies. And we, ideally, we would have to do all the possible combinations of these changes, and all the possible combinations of branch lengths and substitution models to find the best one to explain our data. <clears throat> of course, we cannot do that. So we have to come up with uh, smart algorithms to kind of help us not find the best one, but, but um, kind of cope with this problem in a way. So first approaches in solving this problem uh, I'll, I'll put two representative problems, uh, algorithms. First one is neighbor joining. Basically, it makes a distance matrix between between each each uh, each entry of each species. So how 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 distance how distant distant they are from each other. So it will be a rectangular matrix, and it's kind of a algorithm for clustering based on uh, that is more adapted to to problems in biology. So we just will group the closest ones together and then we will find some kind of a midpoint that will that will be so let's say for example here it will take it will, these these two will be closest together, it will group them together in a cluster and then it will calculate the midpoint and then for all future clusterings this midpoint will be calculate uh, compared to other other uh, uh, species or other nodes. Another one is a greedy search. Uh, it starts with either random or we can use, for example, neighbor joining to produce a starting tree for this search. And then from one point, it calculates all possible immediate uh, steps. So it doesn't try all combinations, but from this from this point, it takes branches and tries around, and then the best one it finds, it moves to this point, and then explores the space around it and moves to that point, and then until all the neighbors of this current tree are worse than than uh, this current tree, then we we say we stop, and we hope we found the best one. But the problem with this is. You can imagine this mountain to be our likelihood function, and this 
space to be our space of, of parameters and and uh, and um, uh, yeah branch lengths and substitution parameters. If we start here, our algorithm will just climb up to the first local optimum and uh, we will stop there. Although let's say this other peaks here are higher than than this that we found, but for some purpose, sometimes this is enough. Um, another approach that is actually used in uh, not only in phylogeny but in all other uh, a lot of others uh, other um, uh, branches of engineering is genetic algorithms, which try to emulate um, natural evolution. So I have a population of possible solutions, and then they they um, define in one time 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 point they define a, a, a population in that time point that generation and then they produce offspring for example in our case offspring could be just another point around this point and then in order to survive they compete they we have a, some sort of selection function that will um, kind of in some kind of stochastic way try to push the entire uh, entire population toward better solutions so they the more the higher they are on this on this space more likely they are to survive to the next generation um, it is slower because we have to cope with more more uh, points it has a parallel search but in some way we tr we hope that we will avoid the problem of reaching local optimum like here that for example, some of them will, with their jumps, uh, actually reach to the top. Again, it's not a solution that will always give you the the uh, the best the best possible solution, but it's it has been shown in multiple um, um, occasions that it will actually perform better than this algorithm. Of course, if we have a super simplistic example of just one peak, then this one will perform as good. And in um, actually my supervisor and with another collaborator in early 2000s, they came up with an idea how to, with, of consensus pruning. Consensus pruning, with, so it's a modified genetic algorithm. So we have these multiple populations that are independent. As you see here, for example, these red ones and blue ones. And um, in our case, so this is really specific to the problem of trees. If they agree, so the, if they, these uh, independent populations agree on certain, certain um, uh, branches, certain clades in this example, they will not uh, try to break this. So when we do these kind of moves as here, between trees, they will not break the this red branches. In this example, this is so-called consensus. So we agree that this is a clade, and then, then several different populations evolve in such way that that uh, they all agree that this is a good clade. Then we will not try to break it, which means that this will help us reach top faster, because with normal genetic algorithm. You still have to, if you, as I expected, if you if you generate offspring or you know, propositions of an, of new trees, trying all possible combinations of plucking out the branches and uh, regrafting them on another place, it can be very cumbersome. So, by these kind of agreements that we shouldn't touch these parts of the tree, we actually can significantly reduce the space that we explore and hopefully reach the peak faster because everything I'm talking about here is very computationally expensive. So if you have huge amount of, amount of species and, and huge amount of, of characters, this can take weeks sometimes to perform this analysis. So if there any, any, any improvement in speed is welcome. Um, so I talked so far about optimization, and this is... Uh, 
we call this maximum likelihood. So this is the goal to find the best solution, the best, mo the best model that explains the, the data. Another approach is not really, um, not that, you know, position with the first is to, to, we define robustness. And robustness would be, um, when we find a clade, we want to be, have some metric that will tell us how, how good this clade is compared to other alternative clades. So for example, here, if we group A and B, or if we B with A, so in a clade, and, and if we group B with D, this one, this one could be better, or this one could be better than this one, but they can be very similar. And if they are very similar in their, in their explanatory power, then we want to know that. Because that could be if we come up with this clade, but uh, with this clade as our solution, this one, uh, we say, okay, this is the better one, but maybe there is an alternative one that is similar, not as good, but it's not far from it. So, for example, in here, if, if tree, tree, uh, tree 3 has likely, likelihood of, I don't know, 40%, and tree 1 has likelihood of 30%, we cannot be as sure. This could be due to noise to our data, due to whatever, but we want to have this, this metric. And uh, this, so far, uh, to, to achieve this, the most popular methods are Bayesian, is, uh, Bayesian statistics, and it includes, this allows you to include some kind of prior knowledge, maybe you know something in advance that will restrict your uh, search space or your model, or you know that some parameters behave in certain ways, so you can incorporate this knowledge into your, into your uh, analysis, and then you will get posterior distribution that is like probability of model having the data. So far we're having the probability of data having the model, but uh, yeah, this allows you to do that. Uh, another way how we implement in Metapyga is to also to do repeat analysis uh, and see how often we came to certain peaks and then include this in, in the, in the um, you know, as a, uh, include this as a metric of robustness. A third way would be that uh, to have so-called bootstrapping. So you sample some data and then this is a well-known statistical method of like, having, uh, coming to exactly this kind of metrics. Now for the end I will talk about my project. Um, actually it was, a, it was software made in order to explore the efficacy of consensus proof. And um, when he started the, the PhD before me, they decided that well, they want to be more user-friendly and more, more, more flexible of the software, because they were frustrated with usually their command line, and then you need to read the manual 5,000 pages to, to understand how it works. So they, they started with the idea that they should be easily portable over multiple platforms. Um, initially, they had only this maximum likelihood method to find the optimum, and then they have this simple method to, to, to calculate robustness from new version that is not yet published, but, I, but that I worked on. I implemented Bayesian inference, so you can have the full Bayesian like Mr. Bias, or, um, so you can have that, and um, features that <coughs> you can use nucleotides as, as your input data, you can use amino acids, and you can use codons. And um, also you can, in from the, from the software, you can um, easily exclude certain parts or partition certain parts, or you can immediately outgroup has a nice user-friendly uh, interface. Um, also, there is we implemented this Trima algorithm, which is algorithm that was developed by a group in Barcelona from Tony Gabaldon that will actually test your data. Often, people put data that has have a lot of noise, and uh, this is some kind of a, a tool that will just warn you if you have 
programmatic data sets, so you don't come to some weird conclusions if you analyze. <clears throat> um, also, we implemented uh, multiple models for from very simple G JC to GTR and everything in between for uh, for amino acids also. Also, a lot of empirical models and for codon models, we implemented two model, two possible models uh, uh, for for optimization. Again, user interface, very nice. Um, also, if you want, you, one can one can uh, um, have window search, or we can have we also implement that you can run it from console. If you Cluster, you would define your all of your parameters in your you, uh, in your graphical interface. You export a file, and then you can run it you know, on, a, on, a, on a cluster somewhere without all of this uh, uh, graphical goodness. Just if you want to parallelize things. Um, when you receive your results, you can immediately in the software on, then check the topology. Uh, reroute it and then see the, the support values, branches, model. Uh, you can import other trees. It's, a, it's not as powerful as some uh, software that are just for tree exploring, but it helps so if you want a quick, quick, uh, quick uh, overview of, of your results. Also, has a very simple Bayesian uh, uh, method for. Uh, inferring ancestral states in ancestral nodes. So it will give you, you can export this, you can export this as a file with numbers, but can tell you, for example, here it's for uh, node 5, this is the inferred ancestral uh, sequence. And uh, also I've implemented the codon models because not a lot of softwares at that time, I'm not, I don't know about the situation now, but at that time, just few of, of softwares actually had this because it's, it's very, very computationally burdensome. So I implemented it that you can run it on NVIDIA's GPUs on your, if you have on your computer. So it goes for amino acid analysis, for code analysis up to 20 times faster on if you have a graphics card. And um, that's it. Uh, the point of my, my PhD, so the some kind of so you know that actually what I actually the goal of my PhD is to kind of find best method out of the box that you can use uh, for your analysis. So not so if we you have here you see that you have robustness and optimization problems and and these algorithms that are used for one thing and algorithm different algorithms that are used for another for the other thing. To find to find in which situation which one is better and try to try to combine them into one and actually to to make this software faster better and uh, all of that. So if you have any questions, I invite you to send me emails. If you want to, I don't know, maybe you have some ideas what to implement. I'm open all for all of that. And if you you're well open to try uh, software, the new version is not yet out because it's still in beta, and I'm. A, uh, yeah, I'm still polishing everything, but if you want to try it, just send me an email, I'll distribute it. Thank you.